Hello, Tara. How you doing? I'm doing okay. You, how the f*** yeah. are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. Still, still healing. Still got a lot of healing to do. Um, but I'm all right. So we have, we, we've dealt with the, all the chemo is done. Surgery is de done. Yep. Now, you, now you just have what? Rehab? Um, I have to do six months of immunotherapy, Gee. which is basically like, it's, it's one drug. I go in, um, I'll go in every three weeks and it'll be like half an hour at the infusion center. Cause they got to re, um, they, they killed all your white blood cells. Now they got to put them back. Yeah. And they, it's, it's, uh, a drug basically designed to keep your immune system fighting the cancer. If there is any, which as far as we know, there is not. Um, Better not be. I, they did. They, they send everything. They send a bunch of samples for testing when you have this kind of surgery. And I got back what they call pathological complete response, which is none of the samples showed any sign of cancer. Okay. So that's what you want to hear. Yes. That's 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 the result you want um i'm wary of saying i'm cancer free because you don't there's no way to know that you know like if you have one cell it could come back but as far as we know yeah i am cancer free um i still have a lot of healing to do i am still pretty tired all the time well yeah you mean aside from the surgery you're recovering from essentially what is poison you have been poisoned for yeah. months, deliberately. Yeah. And people underestimate that. People are like, so you must be feeling so much better. And I'm like, I sleep like 12 hours a day. Yeah, I'm really tired. Nine. Let's get uh let's get the nonsense going because holy Moses. We're off to a hell of a start this week. Let's go. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs. Find all sort of horrible stuff. Bring back here for the segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong?" With you? We're starting with a story this week that I am a very old man. Acknowledge this, but at the same time, sometime unbidden, rising up from deep within, my inner twelve-year-old starts giggling like a lunatic, and I cannot control him. And this is one of those stories. Just so much inner 12 year old on this one. <laughs> Two juveniles in custody after fireworks destroy bathroom. I can't even read it. At Jefferson County Northwest Sports Complex. And when we say destroy, we fucking mean destroy. Wow, look at that picture. What did you do? What kind of fireworks what did you get fuck? access to, man? What in the living God damn? Because I know, had I walked by this scene, I ever, I would have made all the what did you eat jokes. Um. So, <laughs> two juveniles are in custody as of Thursday evening for damaging the Northwest Sports Complex on the 4th of July in Jefferson County, Missouri. Um, this is actually in the article here. There was a collective grumble of, this is why we can't have nice things, that rose up in Jefferson County. News of the Northwest Sports Complex closing because people set off fireworks in the restrooms as residents shaking their fist. Um, setting off fireworks and setting off small bombs aren't all that much different. Some of the explosions Reduce the Northwest Jefferson County Sports Complex bathrooms to rubble. How? Yeah. Like, like I mean, I, I know it's Missouri. But, like, what can you buy that will do that? I'm impressed. I'm just. I'm fucking impressed. You blew up a bathroom with off-the-counter fucking fireworks? 
Holy shit. For real. Wow. Is, you know, these guys just got like one of those whole boxes that, that they sell. If you're not in America, this is a weird sight to behold. Like you go in. And like blew the wall off the place. They did. You go into like Walmart near one of the explodey day celebrations here in America. And they have these, these arrangements. They're like, yeah, yeah. have you ever seen like roses wrapped in plastic with a little box? You know, like some you send you on Valentine's yeah. Day. It's like that, only with explosives. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, does any other country like I know England on like Guy Fox Day does fireworks? Hmm. Well, they do it, but, but it's not like you walk into the store and do them yourself. Right. They like hire a guy. There's like one guy yeah, who gets like, all the explosives. It's not like here where you can just buy, like they do bonfires. Yeah, here we Sorry, I was trying to, my ring light wasn't charged, and I was trying to see if I could charge it, and I can't. Yeah, it's all right. Now, here it's like, D, we, we DIY our explosions. Everybody's doing the shit. Completely unsupervised. And, they, and it's so annoying, like... They just stopped doing them here like last week. So Fourth of July, it sounded like my neighborhood was under siege. We got lucky here because it rained. That was great. I loved it. Oh, it rained here too. Didn't they were out in the rain doing it? Didn't stop anybody. I was like, oh, thunderstorms. They're not going to be out in thunderstorms doing it. They sure were. So poor Simba, who's sitting next to me, was just like, what the fuck? So how much will a collapsed bathroom cost? The current estimate from Jefferson County Parks and Rec is $150,000. Yet. You have made Leslie Nope very <laughs> sad. I just, that is, okay, while it is terrible, yes, this is one of those legendary things that fall, if you're in a small town, this is where they follow you for your entire life, you're going to be like, yeah, you damn boys, what blew up the bathroom when you was 12? Yes. This might be those boys' greatest accomplishment. They're, they're going to be eulogizing your ass, and they'll be talking about at the time you blew up the fucking bathroom at the sports complex. Try that in small town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's 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 move it on along. Pennsylvania is the next one on this one. So, I don't know. I don't know why I have to explain this, but... If your car is impounded, it's not like hermetically sealed and dropped off. They search that. And if they find things, they take them. I don't know why I have to explain, though I do know why I have to explain this, because apparently not everybody gets that. And they just made shit worse for themselves. Um, let's see here. Three charged with breaking into a police compound uh, impound for drugs. Three men have been allegedly arrested. They allegedly broke into Pennsylvania State Police uh, Montoursville impound lot to recover drugs. Troopers say during the traffic stop, a police canine trained to detect the odors of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines alerted officers to the drugs in the truck. Now, pause here. There's a lot of people who say the canine, canine sniffing things is bullshit which they, they train them to possibly I, I'll, I'll, I might, what, cause cops, you know, I might do that, you know, but I mean, a human can smell pot. Yeah. Court documents say uh, state police were notified that someone had broken into the impound lot overnight. Upon arriving troopers say they noticed a hole had been cut in the fence and surveillance shows a person getting into the bed of truck and accessing the cabin through the real rear sliding windows. Police say they learned the car had already been they learned the car had already been searched earlier that morning and troopers recovered 
crack cocaine, methamphetamine, heroin, marijuana, buprenorphine. I don't even know what that one is. Buprenorphine. Buprenorphine? A buprenorphine. Buprenorphine. A digital scale and various items of drug paraphernalia. Well, y'all were busy. That's a lot of drugs, kids. Um, yeah, so the, th <laughs> the thing is, they didn't leave them in the car, stupid. Yeah. They, they weren't going to be there anymore. Yeah. So now you have a burglary charge for nothing. And the impound lot almost certainly has cameras. So, you know, you don't, good and, job. you don't, didn't even get like a J to blaze out of it, you know, because they weren't even there. So you, you did all this work for nothing. Yeah. They got your ass on camera reaching through that little, have you seen the little window on the back of pickup trucks? You know, that one, it's just tiny little sliding, thing. like cramming your ass through that thing. How the fuck do you do that? And you can forget the they weren't mine defense because <laughs> you weren't looking for them. <laughs> well, well I didn't even know I was in there. My buddy must have put those there. What were you looking for? Uh, <laughs> My cigarettes. I I I I dropped <laughs> uh, I I I dropped a French fry. I just remembered. I think there was an no. RB sauce packet in there somewhere. You had that RB sauce, it's good. I just remembered it was there, so I wanted to go get it. <laughs> RB sauce. Not the sandwiches so much, but the sauce is really good. That's why I wanted to. You're not buying this, are you? Okay. <laughs> it's all about the curly fries at Arby's. <laughs> and it's very sad because I haven't been able to taste them in months. And I, I cannot wait to be able to taste the curly fries again. Because I miss them. I'm moving right along. We're off to Rikers Island for this one. And this, I will give oh dude credit. He had a plan. He did, in fact, have a plan. It was, was just... Was it a good plan? No. No, it, re it really, oh. it was not a good plan. It's impressive but not a good plan. Riker's inmate tries to escape wearing New York City correction officer's uniform. An assault suspect held in a Riker's Island jail got his hands on a correction department uniform uh, at a Thursday night and walked around pretending to conduct rounds in a possible attempt to escape. Joaquin Jones, 28, donned the correction officer's uniform, including the official, sh official short shirt, jacket, trousers, and boots in the Otis M. Bontem Correctional Center at some point before 10.30 p.m. After putting on the uniform, Jones walked into an intake area momentarily and then left as if he was hosting the tour, uh, touring the housing area like an officer. He then walked down a corridor when officers recognized him about 1025 inmate Jones is in the department of corrections uniform impersonating an officer departments of corrections how did he get the whole uniform I don't know like boots and all officers ordered Jones to stop he refused and supposedly took a fighting stance which that could mean a lot of things that could be a or he could be like crane kick yeah. ready and shit. Like, you know, fucking Ralph Macchio yeah. up in there. He could do the Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah, the, the, oh, yeah. He could do that one. But, um, <laughs> like, okay. I mean, that exact plan works in the movies all the time in his defense. Except. All the time. How many of you, how many of you go to work and not after like, you've been there a month, two months. And not recognize every single motherfucker in the place. 
Yeah. If there's someone I mean, new, it, everybody knows about it. It worked in Star Wars. Well, that's that that is a that that's a good testing for that one. Tried and true for stormtroopers. Yeah. The fuck? How did he get the outfit? Is is baffling me too. Yeah. Cuz like the the standard the boots and everything. How the fuck? That's impressive. I mean um Sources told the news that Jones found the uniform discarded in garbage bags in a Bantam Center gym. When the center was temporarily shut down a year ago, some staff items, including clothing, were left behind in the gym. Well, that's wow. just, that's, that's on your asses. Yeah. You just have to imagine this guy, he's, he's, just, he's fucking around the gym, he's like, Oh, jackpot. Yeah. It's like, did you want him to try to do this shit? The, 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 I feel like if he tried it at like shift change, he might have had a better. No. Some better luck. No. It's this is not the movies. No, Rikers Island is a pretty big facility yeah but this everybody's is... not gonna know everybody i not... feel like he had a shot <sighs> wow they really just threw all the uniforms in the trash where inmates could get them that's amazing who gets fired is what i want to know probably no one even though i mean honestly Everybody at Rikers needs to get fired. They need, they've needed to shut that place down for years. Uh, yeah. It's a fucking hellhole. It, yeah. Reminder that just because you send someone, someone is found guilty of a crime does not mean they need to be tortured for it. But Right. Anyway. Um, moving right along. We often get pictures on this show that when we see them, we're like, how are you not dead? This is one of the most impressive how are you not dead pictures. Like all of the stars had to line up correctly for your ass to just have minor fucking injuries. Like th th this is, I don't know how you did this. Driver walks away after wedging Lamborghini Aventador under trailer in high speed. You're looking, you're seeing the picture. Look at that oh shit. Let me put that. I'm going to make that big. Let's get a big picture there so everybody, everybody can, can get an idea of what the hell happened there. How the fuck are you not dead? Driver of a 2018 Lamborghini walked away with minor injuries after wedging the car underneath a tractor trailer in a high-speed crash on Saturday. Spencer Hyde, 36, was traveling a high rate of speed on I-75 in Georgia. Hey, I used to drive that a lot. Yeah. When he lost control of his Lamborghini and struck the back of an 18-wheeler in the right lane. Uh, Hyde's car was trapped underneath the rear of the trailer, causing the closure of two lanes for nearly one and a half hours. No other injuries aside from Hyde's were reported. Um, photos from the scene were published by the Gordon Gazette. Post-extraction show a smashed front end but an intact safety cell. That's modern chassis tech for you. 20 minutes before the crash, police reportedly issued a bolo on the same highway for a Lamborghini speeding at more than 100 miles an hour. It's unclear if he'll face Look, any charges at this time. You have a badass sports car. You want to you wanna open it up and go crazy. Maybe pick one of the highways that they don't allow commercial trucks on. Well, I mean, the or or go at like 3 a.m. when the highway's empty. I'm going to catch hell for this, but I do not understand the point of sports cars. Because are you using them for a vehicle sport? No, you're just driving the fucker on the highway, yeah. which means you are encouraged to drive. This car is made to go 
fucking super speed. So you were sitting there going, you know, I could go fucking Mach 1 right about now if I really wanted to. Why is that a thing? Yeah, honestly, buying one of those just to drive on the highway is like edging forever. Right? You're never going to get there. It's, it's, yeah. You're never going to arrive. I have the same problem with the civilian Hummer. I don't know why we sell Hummers to civilians. What, what, what do you need that for? You know, there's an electric when I one used now. to. Yeah, I used to work in Rye, New York, which if you know anything about Rye, New York, nobody in that fucking town needs a Hummer for shit. But all the soccer moms had them. Bunch of fucking soccer moms in yoga pants driving H3s <laughs> trying to street park them. <laughs> and I'm like, for what? All right. Just get a goddamn minivan. That's what you're using it for. Like it's people have this, this, this idea that the car is a reflection. No, it's not. Nobody gives a fuck about your car. Nobody. Anyone who gives a fuck about your car is deeply fucked in the head. Like I understand wanting a cool looking car. Yeah. I am soon, soon to be trading in my car and selling Dan's and I'm hoping to get a cute little mini. Yeah. You know, cause I need something that's better for the snow here, but I like something small. Yeah. I just, I, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get a cute little mini, but like, I don't understand. Like, first of all, I don't understand the American mentality of we need these enormous fucking cars. Yeah. Well, I have two kids. Yeah, you don't need a Hummer. And you don't need a Lamborghini. Yeah. Like, I can go 200 miles an hour. And if you ever do, you're going to jail. Right. Like, where are you, where are you doing that, sport? Right. Like, don't get me wrong. If you appreciate the cars driving, like, your NASCAR and shit, that's cool, I guess. But... Like F1 and all that stuff, although F1, those are barely cars. Those are just like fucking jet engines with wheels. Um, and you appreciate that? That's great. But look at this shit. Look I at will this. say, like, when I, went, when I went to Missouri last year to visit my mother-in-law and the rental I got was a, they gave me a purple Dodge Charger. And I think I mentioned this at the time. Yeah. They were like, all we have left is a purple Dodge Charger. Is that okay? And I was like, is that okay? That's, and I was driving through like middle of fucking nowhere, Missouri. <laughs> that See? was pretty fun. Yeah. But, but like there was nobody else on the road and it was broad daylight and good weather. And I still didn't go above like 85, I don't think. We have shit with the kids this week because, of course, we have shit with kids. Have you ever, did you ever have a fight with one of your parents in public? Like teenage level. Not like, you know, four years old screaming for the fucking candy in the Walmart. I'm talking like teenage level public fighting. I don't think so. It, it can get kind it can get pretty ratchet. It's it. However, this is probably. I this this is wow. Hundreds evacuated after teenage girl sets fire to hotel sofa following fight with mother. Oh, you put that shit in the chat. Oh, well, still there you go. <laughs> it's not like Follow they were along at home. It's not like they weren't going to see it anyway, but look at that yeah. shit. 60 year old <sighs> girl has been arrested after setting a couch on fire at a hotel, causing guests to be evacuated early in the morning following a fight with her mother. This is Florida, California uh, Fire Rescue, uh, located some 80 miles northwest of Orlando. 
received a call at approximately 3.24 a.m. reports of a structure fire at the Hilton Ocala. Units arrived at the nine-story hotel to find audible and visual alarms, an active sprinkler system, and the uh, police department members assisting guests in evacuating the premises. Firefighters encountered moderate smoke as they entered the library and began to make their way to the first floor hallway uh, to find the source of the fire, which was worsening as they approached. Uh, fire was extinguished entirely within seven minutes of arrival. Following a brief investigation, police ended up arresting a 16-year-old girl who was visiting from Peora, Illinois. Police said she allegedly started the fire after fighting with her mother, although authorities did not say what caused the fight. And what could have led her to allegedly set a sofa on fire in the building because of it? What the fuck? I never, see, I was, my mom was real strict and we, like, we knew there was shit you don't do in public. <laughs> so we did not fight with her in public. But I have seen, like, I worked the fitting room at an Old Navy for a year. So I've seen some shit with the back to school shoppers and some of the ways kids talk to their parents. I'm just like, I would still be in my room. Like, what the fuck? But at what point? At what point? How do you get so mad at your mom? That you decide, I know what to do about this. I'm going to set this fucking couch on fire. That'll show that bitch. Did I Eldritch in the channel says, how do we sleep while our couches are burning? Uh, like yeah. what? Well, I know. And I know like kids, their brain isn't fully formed. No, actually. No, I no, no. They have been, that study was invalidated. That whole, it's, you're fully formed by 25. It's not. Do you know why it was really? invalidated? Why? One reason is the oldest person in the study was 25. They didn't do anybody past 25, the scanning. They just got to 25 and like, okay, they're done here. So that one, that one's one of those. Hey, misunderstood science because they don't explain it properly in the media but like our but, but like by 16 oh you're still dumb as shit right like your brain isn't really done cooking you don't really understand shit near as well as you think you, i understand that like you're dumb you can't help it like you are run entirely on and like overdoses of hormones, but still, I am racking my brain trying to figure out what could have led how what what series of events, please, even if yeah. it's some Rube Goldberg esque level of logic, how did we get from fighting with mom to hotel couch on fire? How? Yeah. It's like, even if it's like one of those family circus with the little dotted lines and the kid jumping all over the fucking neighbor, <laughs> even if it's like that, just explain it to me. Show me the map. Yeah, a flow chart, something. Just give me your thought process from point A to point B and where you were hoping to wind up. The last one is from uh, Washington area. I, I discovered that there's, I keep hearing about the tri-state area. So there, there are so many the things you do. Okay. Back up a little bit. When you're young, people will talk about the tri-state area. And you're like, what is that? That's something magical. And you just grow up. That's the center of the universe. And you just grow up and you realize not only is it like, it's just where three states intersect the area. There are many tri-state areas all across the no, country. There's only, there's only, there's only one. And I'm from it and it's the center of the goddamn universe. But th that's the reason. New I'm Yorkers, man. We, 
We really think we're the center of the goddamn. I didn't realize until I moved to Colorado, married to a Missourian. We were watching Saturday Night Live one night. And it was John Mulaney, so they were doing this big musical number in the subway, and I was like, it occurred to me for the first time in my fucking life, I was like, do people not from New York just not get half the jokes on this show? And I asked Dan, and he's like, yeah, to be honest, until I moved to Jersey, I didn't get like a third of the jokes on the show. And I was like, how is this show still on the air when like 90% of the country doesn't even get half the jokes? Well, the reason I bring this up is I discovered there's an area in Washington called the Tri-City. Kind of like how uh, Minnesota has the Twin Cities. I didn't know that. I was like, I, w I was reading this, this over and over. And I was like, where the fuck is the Tri-Cities? I, I had to do research on it. Anyway. The reason we're talking about it is someone did something incredibly stupid. Tri-Cities man is in jail after a high-speed chase across the Tri-Cities in a stolen Kennewick police car. This guy, this fucking guy, Christopher Noel Pearson, 39, was booked into the Benton County Jail on more than three dozen charges after police chased a stolen cruiser Monday night across the Tri-Cities. He's facing... Facing eight felony charges and 30 misdemeanors. <laughs> Incident began when officers were dispatched for a welfare request in the 1200 block. Um, after Pearson called 911 more than two dozen times and refused to ask or answer dispatcher, dispatcher's questions. When police arrived, Pearson was outside of the home, cursing at people nearby and had knives in his hand. Police said officers quickly left their patrol vehicles to give verbal commands, leaving the cars running. As officers moved back to maintain distance between themselves and Pearson, they left their vehicles unprotected. Officers continued moving back, and Pearson allegedly slashed the hood of one car and began throwing knives. Now, I don't know much. I am not a smart man. <laughs> but I do know... That when you throw knives at people with guns, you have literally brought a knife to a gunfight, and I am told that is bad. And then you threw it away. Then you throw the knife away. It's not so like you a don't boomerang. even have the knife anymore. No. Yeah. Right. It don't come back. It's it's. So he then jumped into one of the patrol cars and drove off. While the cops were all standing there, you have to imagine there is a moment where everybody's just like, why didn't you? I don't know. So this guy was white, right? <laughs> I think You're we all know wrong. this guy was white. You're not fucking wrong. So, some people get to do that and yeah. some people don't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> quote, Dispatch, he just took my car, An officer was heard on the uh, broadcastify public audio feed telling emergency dis dispatchers after 8 p.m. <laughs> Which, there are some people out there who will just sit and listen to police dispatch all the time, just yeah. like online. Inter you can imagine when this one came out, people were busting up laughing. Um, local law enforcement deployed spike strips and said a vehicle authorized to perform a pit maneuver during the chase. Uh, Pearson was arrested and appears to be facing felony charges for three counts of second degree assault, two counts of malicious mischief, auto theft, attempting to elude and first degree robbery. Misdemeanor charges include obstructing law enforcement, resisting arrest, DUI, and 27 counts of misusing the 911 system. Uh, Chase moved quickly westbound. Well, I don't see a picture. I'm assuming this dude is white. Eh. Because. He got to throw knives at the cops, get in one of their cars in front of them, and then drive around and was arrested alive. So I'm just, I'm just taking a wild guess there. Video on social media by a city citizen shows more than a dozen police vehicles going through a roundabout during the chase. That's just an image you got in your head is a bunch of cops trying to figure out how the fuck to operate all of them in the fucking round. 
And this dude probably thought he was John fucking Wick. Like, did you see John Wick 4 with the roundabout? Yeah. You know that's what he thought he looked like. Pearson then tried to flee on foot, and a police dog was used to stop him. He uh, was taken to the hospital, according to audio traffic, and then booked into the jail, 11.50 p.m. Monday. Son, what the fuck? I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna vote meth on this one. This one seems like a meth. Yeah. This does not seem like a drunk. Drunk, I would not be coordinated enough to pull this shit off. Yeah, this feels like meth. This is meth. This is our old friend, methamphetamine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a friend. Sponsor, maybe. But it's our, but yeah, it's our old companion. Brought to you by methamphetamine. They keep doing it. We keep talking about it. Fucking hell. Where would we be on this show without meth? I wonder. We, I mean, we, as much as we tell people, like, don't do meth, where would we be? I, I think we would be in a much more pleasant country. Yeah. Because you, you wouldn't be having this shit. But think of, but think of the content. <laughs> Fuck the content. I would give up the fucking content. Fuck that. Would we have content? No more. That's all that matters anymore. Or fucking meth, please. I, I could, we could get by without fat, without meth. Fucking hell. So what have we learned this week? Um, do not bring a knife to a gunfight, especially if it's with the fucking police. And then don't throw it away. And you know he didn't even. If you've already, if you've already brought a knife to a gunfight, don't throw it away because then you ain't got shit. And you know he wasn't doing any, like, one of those ninja throws. It was just sort of like, eh! Yeah. Oh, shit, I hit the mic. This wasn't, this wasn't Clove from the Hunger Games. Right, it was just like, like eh! Clatters on the pavement. Yeah. We've learned that, you know, no fight with your parents is worth an arson charge. I cannot no. fucking imagine I guess the only thing I could think is that since she's 16, they're legally responsible for her, so they're going to have to pay for it. I've, it makes sense to me. I don't care if that's true or not. I'm keeping it. Let me sleep at night. <sighs> We've learned that uh, sports cars are completely unnecessary for many reasons. Especially accidentally getting jammed under a tractor trailer. Um, we've learned just because you have what seems like a clever plan, maybe you need to think a few more steps ahead. Like, yeah, the, your entire plan was I found a guard uniform. Like this shit is not a video game. All right. This isn't yeah, like, I understand that works in the movies, but so many things that work in the movies don't work in real life. Like if you're like, it's like your Skyrim or some shit. If you put on a guard outfit, all the guards are like, oh, you're a guard. They treat you just like a fucking guard. Not even thinking about it. I, I, my favorite version of that trope is actually from Return of the King, where like Sam and Frodo just steal some orc armor. And even though they're like a full two feet shorter than all the other orcs, all the other orcs are just like, well, they're orcs, obviously. <laughs> like, no. Uh, we have learned that uh, if your car gets taken, everything in the car is taken by the police. The drugs are gone. You stupid, stupid man. Finally, we have learned, apparently... American fireworks are capable of blowing up a fucking bathroom. I still do not understand how. I gotta look at that picture again, because it's amazing. They blew a wall off, dude. How the fuck? Like, what the fuck kind of jacked up fireworks are they selling in Missouri? Like, I have been to Missouri a few times now. It's fucked up place. I understand that. Man. 
well, what the fuck kind of fireworks are they selling in Missouri? Because I live in a state, I live in the little, like, liberal donut hole surrounded by libertarians. And I don't think we have the blow the wall off fireworks. I, I... Look at that little cat. Oh, yeah, that's Charlie back there. Man, he is just, he is just wrecking poor Grady shit. Yeah, quite a bit. They're still adjusting to him. Great, he's like, God damn it, that's my spot too, you little shit. 